is tough out there. Consumer confidence is dropping. Gas and food prices are skyrocketing. Uh, but while Wall Street is worrying about the credit crisis, how are Main Street's investments faring? And joining us to talk to about that a little bit is Doug Flynn. He is the certified financial planner with Flynn Zito Capital Management. Uh, Doug, you know, when we kind of sum things up, it doesn't really sound that bright out there. Uh, but for a Main Street investor, someone that looking to keep their 401k or IRA or mutual funds, how are things faring? Well, it, it hasn't been a very good year so far, and, and what we found is that typically does happen in an election year. So uh, if you're, you're in your 401k, you want to keep consistent to your long-term plan and keep dollar cost averaging in every week off your paycheck and not really get off your game plan too much just because we're having a little bit of turmoil right now. Well, it's hard to you know, you sift through those headlines a little bit. If you're looking at investment short-term, though, what would be some of the things that you would tell investors to look at? Yeah, outside of your uh, 401k, if you have a short-term investment horizon, there are really great opportunities. In, in, the, in the higher yielding municipal bond uh, tax-free market. If you go back and look at uh, munis as a percentage of yielding of treasuries, uh, historically they yield less, but right now they're actually yielding more, and that's an opportunity that we haven't had in a really long time. And why is that? It's just because of the flight to quality. Everybody put a lot of money into treasuries and went very safe. And with all the subprime lending and the fallout in the bond market, a lot of the bond values are out, out the window with uh, junk bonds. And that's not really the case. These aren't junk bonds. Well, is there some reason to be concerned, though, about investing in munis? Um, well, you always have the worry of uh, not being paid back. But typically, if you're in a municipality that, uh, you know, is collecting its taxes or if it's a bridge bond and they haven't stopped collecting a toll at the bond uh, at the bridge then then you're going to be paid back so there's just a really good opportunity in the short term for for munis to, uh, just based on historically where they should be okay and then if you're looking for something that's more be more long term what would you be looking at there yeah longer term the last couple of years we had uh, value stocks outperform growth stocks uh, you'll see a cycling back towards growth um, so you want to do that you want to have uh, large more larger companies you want want to really have more of your international exposure here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, you could argue that the U.S. is a little bit more undervalued than international stocks at this point. So uh, if you want to play the international game, get big, huge, multinational U.S.-based firms. You know, if you look at the news over the last quarter, though, one of the big headlines came from, let's say, General Electric. Mm -hmm. So uh, that didn't see, that's usually a stock that's in a lot of mutual funds and, and people really rely on that big U.S. company. But they cause some doubts for investors out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, But you still see opportunity. Why do you still see opportunity there where it seems like some of those bigger companies that we have a lot of confidence in mm -hmm. on Wall Street uh, faltering. How, why do you have confidence well, in if still? you have a large percentage of your revenue from overseas um, and you look at just the valuation differential there these are the times when you want to pick up some of those great companies that uh, a year ago were too expensive these are the times when you want to start building them up so that a couple of years from now everything will of course work itself out over time and these are the times when you want to pick these up you don't want to buy them when they're fifty dollars a share you want to buy them when they're thirty sure well you know a lot of financial firms have strong international exposure too. let's say like a city group what do you think about financials yeah financials uh, are probably the weakest point in the market if you take them out of the S&P the S&P really isn't that terrible it's just that that financial sector has really brought down the entire market so I think you really don't want to be uh, overweight in there you want to be underweighted for the time being until they work out all their problems there's more to come there so I wouldn't I wouldn't go heavy there and really quick again something with international exposure of course is commodities oil companies energy companies in general what are your thoughts about that as a long-term play yeah I think that uh, energy has got a has a good place in the portfolio it should be but uh, I, I think you, you, people can overdo it commodities people are running to the game now it's, it somewhat reminds me of uh, the late 90s following tech stocks you should have had them all along you don't want to be buying them now if you don't already own them that's that's the way we, we are you buying it. tech stocks now or are you uh, suggesting I, I like I like technology it's a little early but I like it okay good to know we're gonna be back to talk to you a little bit later uh, Doug thank you so much for for joining us first time here on Fox Business Morning great to have you uh, and still ahead this morning what action will the Fed take uh, day two of the big meeting in Washington but first uh, here's a look at the futures right now we were just looking at oil moments ago and saw that it was on the rise a little bit but it seems that futures are holding steadily in the green, we'll take that for now. And as we uh, go to break, here's your Fox Business Travelers forecast.